Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys come to my channel. And what I'm going to do today is a little different than what I normally do, and I'm going to do it uh, because actually this video needs to be done because there are certain things that I play that's real straightforward as far as course, and then there's this weird thing going on, and you know I can't write it out or tabulate it across the screen, so I have to kind of do a breakdown. And this is one of the most difficult guitar riffs to ever learn to play. I mean, it took me years to figure out, damn, what is he doing? And after a while, I figured it out. You know, it was kind of a weird chord uh, grip, and then it was a hammer on at the same time, and it gives your hands a workout. And the riff that I'm talking about is uh, the Gap Band's Yearning for Your Love. I think the guitar player, who I thought name was uh, Roy Calhoun, but somebody told me that was the drummer name. I think the guitar player name was Macon, but I'm not sure. But whoever he is. He has brought a very unique flavor to the Gap Band sound. He's kind of like the, the R&B equivalent to Andy Sermons to the, of the police. Where if you took both of those guys out of the band, their sound would totally be changed drastically because they brought so much to the sound of their, of their band. And uh, Randy Macon, or should I say the guitar player for uh, Gap Band, uh, very, very unique, weird chord uh, voicings and phrasing same thing with uh the guy from gq a lot of his stuff is just hard to follow it's like this guy's just on a whole nother plane so i ain't gonna try to jump on board just gonna try to do my own thing and kind of try to my best to match it up but the song is yearning for your love and the riff at the intro is like this <laughs> So basically what he's doing is like uh, you do a bar chord across the fifth fret. Then you take your second finger, put it on, what is that, the G string on the sixth fret. And then you take your third finger and put it right up under uh, the, the, third, the second finger, which is the third finger on the seventh fret on, again, the G string. Then you take your pinky, put it on the seventh fret on the B string so it sounds like this and then what he does which is you pretty kind of unique is uh he's just raising these top two hammer one oops so that's that's what you know that's the intro that's the chord you know i don't know what the name of it is because you know this is one chord name, you know, technically, and then you raise these two fingers up, it's considered a, a different chord, you know, so don't know what the name of it is, it's not really that important, just as long as you know how to play it, so. It's and sometimes it's hard to not hit these other strings, because the, the strings that's supposed to be struck is actually, it's like, it's the D on down to the E. And sometimes you accidentally hit that A, which shouldn't be up there. So that's it. That's the riff. I'm going to do another one right quick, and then I'm going to explain why I did this one. And I'm going to explain why, well, I just do it. Uh, somebody asked me to do a guitar cover or lesson for Time Time Genius of Love. And actually, I did it. You know, I already did it. Uh, I did the, the cover, and the cover is, the purpose of the cover is to give you the chords, not teach you how to play your guitar. You know, because again, I, I stress that there's a difference between the two. Uh, what I want to do for you guys is teach you how to play your guitar, not teach you how to play a song. Because if I teach you how to play your guitar, you can play thousands of songs. So that's the route you want to take. You don't want to go the other route as far as, uh, I don't know how to play guitar, but just show me where my fingers should be. No, don't waste a lot of time doing things wrong when you can be doing them correctly right out the gate. So I'm going to do this vid. I'm going to do this uh, tutorial, should I say, a quick uh, how to play this, even though I already did it in the cover. But I'm going to do it anyway. The way that I, I break down songs, again, I dissect them. The only thing that's going on in that song is two things. It's this main little chord thing, and then there's doing the verses. There's just this little riff going. So it starts off with, uh, which is a E minor 7. And he kind of pull off and then he goes down here comes back and he reconfigure his fingers actually he just take this this third finger which is on the a string which is what seven eight nine nine fret 
and he just puts it here on the ninth fret on the G string. So it's that's it. So the first chord is an E minor seven. You just take that third finger and put it next to uh to the other other string, which is the G on the ninth fret. First is here, then put it here. So it that's it to the T. That's exactly what's playing on, on the recording. And doing the verses is kind of like a little riff thing where you just take your finger on the seventh fret, run across the D string, going down to the E. So it's just hitting the bar and then hitting the G string. Or should I say the B string on the A fret? So it's that's it. So that's the lesson of uh, the riff, how to play Yearning for Your Love, and then the guitar chords for Genius of Love Tom Tom Club. Till next time, take care. Thanks for watching.